Hey guys, it's Chili here. Welcome back to Hardware 3D. Today, we're going to take all that knowledge we built from our explorations in Windows API land, and we are going to build our actual Windows framework. So, added a bunch of files in here. Let's go over them. First one is chiliwin.h. Uh, now, what this guy does is he includes Windows. So, it's a header that includes a header. And you might be saying, why don't I just include Windows.h directly? Well, the thing about Windows.h is that it takes your namespace and it takes a big steamy dump all over it. It crams it full of a whole bunch of garbage that you're never going to use and some garbage that will actually mess you up. Uh, mainly, the one that I really hate, this guy right here, min-max. So, Windows.h will define a macro, two macros, min and max. And the thing about them is then when you try to use stidmin or stidmax, the macro will replace the min max part with a bunch of code and it is going to take a big dump all over your compilation. So there's a bunch of switches that Microsoft has lovingly provided you with to turn all that bullshit off. And we want to define these switches before we actually include Windows. And we don't want to do this in every single freaking file that we include Windows in. So what we do is we create a header, and the header defines all these switches before it includes Windows.h and then everyone's happy. Uh, and we can also specify what Windows version we're targeting, and this is very useful in specific situations. So. We define what version we're targeting, we include the header SDK version, then we define a bunch of switches to disable bullshit, and then we include Windows.h. This is the high level way of including Windows. And then in all of our places where we want Windows, we want to include ChiliWin. And you want to include ChiliWin at the very top. Because if you include something above ChiliWin that uh, incidentally includes Windows, Windows is going to be included before those switches are active. So just remember to include ChiliWin first. All right. So now we've got our Windows API uh, header all configured. Now we want a class to represent a window. It's going to encapsulate the creation and the destruction of a window and also the message handling. And it's going to encapsulate the handle to the window and operations that work on the handle to the window. It's going to be a very nice, clean interface. So first thing we know about window is when we create a window, we need a window class. All right, you need to register that class and then you use that same name to register the window on the Windows API side. But here's the thing, um, and I didn't show this in my exploration, but you register a Windows class, you should also unregister it before you exit your program. It's not a huge deal if you don't, but to be a clean programmer, you should you know, strive for that sort of symmetry. Everything you register, you unregister. Everything you new, you delete, etc. So we're going to have a class here. Uh, and it is going to have a constructor that registers on the Windows API side and a destructor that unregisters. And we're going to make this because we only need one window class. We're going to make this a singleton. So we're going to have a static instance of this class type. And the static instance will be created and constructed when the program starts. And then the actual public interface only has two functions here. Get the name of the class and get the handle to the instance. Because that will also be stored in, uh, in this instance class. This is, this is confusing. Instance, instance. But anyways, so let's take a look at uh, what we got here. So the constructor is very simple. We call get module handle to get the handle to the instance. Uh, and then we can save that in our data. And now we don't have to pass it through the entry point so we can have it as a static member. Otherwise, we would have to, this constructor would have to take a parameter and it wouldn't be as clean. And then we just do what I showed you before. Um, we're setting the Windows proc to a procedure called handle message setup. And that is actually defined in the enclosing class window. We'll get to that in a second. There's a whole bunch of hanky panky that goes along with this, but it's cool and you'll like it. And for the H instance, we call get instance, get name. And so we register all the things. Well, we set up all the things and we register. The destructor, all it does is unregister. Right. And then we got our two interface functions. Get the, uh, the class name, which is just a static variable. So we return it like this. And get the handle to the instance, which is in the instance of window class. So we do the, uh, the static 
instance dot h instance we return that there you go so that's that all done very nice class here inner class of window private nobody outside needs to know this even exists then in the actual window class we've got some functions here obviously we're going to have a constructor that is going to create our window we've got a destructor that is going to destroy our window and uh, well that's pretty much all we have at this point point. and then in the private we've got some static functions that are labeled as callback so this should be obvious if you think about it but uh, the windows procedure that we use it's a callback that windows api will call uh, it can't be set to a member function because a member function uh, besides all these parameters it takes a hidden parameter that is the pointer to the instance on which the member function is being called uh, but windows api doesn't know about c doesn't know about you know member functions so you can't pass it a member function and expect it to work but a static function is basically it's the same thing as a free function so you can create a static function and you can specify its calling convention and then you can use this you can register this as a windows procedure now we've actually got two windows procedures here uh so we'll, we'll see how this works it's it's interesting it's a little bit of uh, a mechanism and i do this to enable me to have a handle message as a member function that will handle our uh, windows messages because like i said you can't use this directly as a windows procedure but you can if you do a little hanky panky but anyways first things first construction of window all right so we got a constructor let's take a look at it it's pretty simple it takes a width takes a height takes the name of the window and we construct our window with the class name the name of the window the style of the window uh here's the width and the height here is the position we just use we let windows decide the starting position of our window we don't pass that in and other stuff that i have already covered in previous videos now one very interesting thing here we didn't we set this as null pointer in previous videos this is a long pointer to a parameter a custom parameter that we're going to pass in to create windows it can be anything we want and we're setting this to pointer to our window instance here this is going to be very important we'll, we'll talk more about this guy in a little bit but what you might be wondering about is what's all this wrecked stuff what is this adjust windows wrecked well if you set the size of the window the width and the height to 640 by 480 that's the width and the height of the entire window but usually when you say i want 640 by 480 you want your client region the region where you're going to be drawing in to be 640 by 480 you don't care how big the title bar and whatever is you want to specify based on the client region uh, and what adjust windows rect is, is if you give it a rectangle whose size is the size of your desired client region it will adjust it so that the new size is the size of the entire window including all the stuff specified by whatever style your uh, your window has so you pass in the rect you pass in the style and you pass in a bool saying whether or not you have a menu and it will calculate the window size you need to get the client region that you desire so we're doing that creating the window passing in a pointer to ourself and then we show the window and that's this constructor all done pretty simple except for this thing here which we'll talk about later on the destructor is very simple it just calls destroy window on the handle to the window all right now let's get on to the meat of this video which is this uh, callback hanky panky that we're doing we got two callbacks and we've got this uh, member function that's that seems to be handling messages so how does this all work what's going on here well First thing we should note, we've got handle message setup and we have got handle message thunk. So if we look at where we're registering the Windows class, we see that windows that are of this class will start off with their Windows procedure being pointed to handle message setup. So this is the guy that is going to be initially handling all of our messages. And we can see what he's doing is he's just checking to see if the message type is equal to uh non-client create and if so we're doing some bullshit and if not we're just doing the default so what is nc create and why are we so interested in it well if we look at a good old friend msdn we see that uh it's sent prior to create uh when a window is first created so this message is sent when a window is being created 
makes sense, right? WPRAM is not used. LPRAM pointer to a create struct, which contains information about the window being created. So if we look at create struct in here, we see a bunch of stuff. And if we look around in here somewhere, at the very top, we see LP create params. Now this is actually the custom parameter that was passed in from here. So in our create struct that we're gonna get from NC create, we'll be able to access this information that was passed in through our constructor. This is how we connect the, uh, the pointer to the window instance to our Windows API message handling mechanism. So how does this work? Well, when we get the create message, we are going to reinterpret L parameter to be a pointer to our create struct. Then out of that create struct, we are gonna static cast LP create params to a pointer to window because that's what it is. It is a pointer to our window instance that we created here. Now this next part is key and it all hinges on one function, set window long pointer. So what this function does, the Windows API function, it allows you to set data stored at the Windows API side um, with respect to your, your window. So you can set a whole bunch of information. You can change the Windows style here, Windows IP, ID. Uh, you can change the H instance. But here's the one that we're really interested in, user data. So we can set some user data associated with a particular window. And what we wanna do now is we wanna store the pointer to our window class inside of the window data on the Windows API side. That'll create a link between the window itself and the class that we're using to control it. So we call set windows pointer. We say the window that we want to uh, set the data on, the type of data, which is the user data, and we pass it in pointer to our window. Now that pointer is going to be stored inside of the data on the Windows API side, the Windows 32 side. Now the second thing that we're going to set here is now that we have installed our pointer in the window, we want to use a different um, message procedure. That's the second message procedure down here, handle message thunk. Uh, so again, we call set window long pointer. And the thing we're going to change now is the windows proc. And we are going to pass in a pointer to handle message thunk right here. So now we have changed all messages from now on will be handled by this procedure instead of by this one. This one is only for setting up our pointer. And then this Windows message create, now that we have the pointer to our instance, we forward the message to our actual handler, which is down here. So we use the pointer to call this member function on this instance of window and pass it all of its parameters and it gets handled. All right, so now messages from now on will not be handled by this procedure, they will be handled by this one. What is the function of this procedure? Well, like I said, you can't register a member function directly with Windows API because it can't call these guys. So what we do is we register a static function. That static function does two things. It retrieves the pointer to our Windows class from the data stored in the, uh, the Windows 32 side. So we get window long pointer user data. We cast that to pointer to window. Then we call handle message. So this thunk, all its job is, is to invoke our member function. And once our member function is invoked, then we can access all of the member data of our window and we can, you know, set flags and pass information in there. It's all very nice and clean. And this just works like the member functions that we've been using before. So again, to review, you've got two static handlers that you register with Windows 32. The first one is an installation. It only exists to set up the pointer to our instance in the Windows 32 side. And then it will install the second handler here, which is a thunk, which just calls, it's just an adapter. It adapts from Win32 call convention to our uh, C++ member function call convention. And as you can see here, the uh, our current message handler is very simple. We'll add more to it 
in the next video. But right now, all we're handling is the close message. But this might seem a little strange to you because we're posting the quit message, which is normal, but we are not getting the default behavior. We are returning zero, which signals to Windows that we have handled that message. So what this by itself that would do is when you click the close button, it would post a quit message, but it would not do anything to destroy the window. And you might say that's strange. Why, if you close the window, you probably want to destroy it. Well, here's the thing. We already have a destructor that destroys the window. So I don't want to def have default window proc called destroy window. And then later on, when my windows, my window object gets destroyed, call destroy window again. I don't want to call destroy window twice. So I don't, I don't destroy the window from our handler. I only destroy the window from our destructor. So what happens here is we post quit message. And then in our main here, uh, we've got our message pump. When we post the quit message, this is going to return zero. We're going to exit this. We're going to exit here. Then our destructor is going to be called for our window. And then our window will be destroyed only once. And that's it. It's a very clean, simple solution to that problem. And here's our entry point, by the way. Um, all, all the good stuff in here. Um, this is the same as what we've had before. Nothing very interesting, except here we are instantiating an object of type window. That'll call the constructor. That'll create that guy. It's all good. One last thing you might be wondering about here, we use the calling convention callback. Uh, and that's just a definition for std call. If you go to windows.cpp, we use the calling convention winAPI. That's also just a definition for std call. So they're exactly the same. They're interchangeable. In fact, here I do, I use callback and there I use winAPI. I should probably make that uh, the same, but I don't really care. All right, now the moment of truth. We run this and we get our, we get our window here. The don donkey fart box. Beautiful. All right. Now here's something cool that we can do because this is a class. Um, we could create multiple instances and it will basically just work. So here I create window and I create window two. And if you run this, you get, yeah, you get two windows. Looks kind of funky, but our oh Lord who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And if you close this guy, beautiful. They both close, everything is happy. So with our encapsulation there, constructing and destroying a window becomes incredibly simple. It's a single line of code now. Beautifully managed by the power of C++ and RAI. Now there's more we could do to make this uh, system a little more robust, a little more uh, flexible. For example, with the current system, if you close either of the windows, the, the program will exit. Uh, but sometimes you might only want, you might want to be able to close one window while keeping the other one open and keeping the program running. And you could do that. It just would require more code, more effort, and uh, it's not worth it for this video. But it's an extension you could make if you so desired. That's going to about do it for this video. In the next video, we're going to set up a system for handling errors. And uh, we're also going to add a custom application icon. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more Hardware 3D.